Ready for a podcast about sports and current events that's worth a damn? Well, you're in the right place. This is On The Clock Radio. Funny as hell. And they love to argue. Let's do the damn thing. You're listening to On The Clock Radio with Raul Lescano. Raul Lescano. Reggie Edwards. Reggie Edwards. And Tyrone Benson. And Tyrone Benson. Now I know you haven't left me, but I feel like I'm alone. I'm a big boy now, but I'm still not grown, and I'm still going through it. Pain in the hurt, soaking up trouble like rain in the dirt. And I know only I can stop the rain with just a mention of my Savior's name. In the name of Jesus, devil, I rebuke you for what I go through. We're trying to make you do what I used to, but all that stops right here. What's going on, clock man? It's me and my boy Tyrone. Reggie's still trying to get the bag, works from home, but he's closing up shop, I guess. We'll see how he's going. Probably still healing from that ankle injury in basketball. But it's a beautiful, beautiful Thursday, June 20th, man. Had a beautiful day off yesterday. We'll talk about that a little bit. But we got some things we want to talk about, man. Kansas is trying to take Kansas City and put it back in Missouri. Falcons put Matt Ryan in the ring of honor. Notre Dame is loaded with NFL vets. Alvin Kamara needs a contract. NBA coach at Carousel. And, of course, I'm going to go ahead and go and do a little youth football rant later on. So let's get it going, man. You on the clock, baby. Let's get it. About life ain't nothing, but you either be the one mad as you trap or the one hunting. Trapped in your own mind, waiting on the Lord. A hunting with the word that cuts like a sword. The spoken word is stronger than the strongest man. Carries the whole world like the strongest hand. Through the trial of tribulation. What's up, Tyrone, man? You ready? I know you're here with a Oh, sure. Yeah, man. Let's do it. How's life been going treating you, my guy? I heard that you are now. Put the whistle back on. I hear that you put strap the cleats back up. You back in business now. That's what I hear. Correction. I have a uh, electronic whistle now. I don't put whistles to my mouth Ooh. no more. Wait, wait, stop. What? You're not gonna go right it's by that electronic. Whistle. The fuck is an electronic whistle? Yeah, man. What are you talking about? It has battery. You turn, you turn it on, hit the little button, and it's like a whistle. It sounds just like a whistle. You're li- you're like lying my- right now. <laughs> no, you're no, li- I'll go grab it. No. <laughs> You have an electronic whistle? Bro, yeah, man. you can't preach old school and then you're doing this new school type of coaching, this Gen Z coaching, whatever this is. Oh, all electronic hey, whistle? Bro, yeah, clearly you didn't use it today. You just. No, I didn't use it today. <laughs> Bro, what made you go get an electronic but whistle? Nah, but nah, see, here go right here, right? That's it right there. No. Just turn it on and get the fuck. Get out of here, bro. <laughs> bro are you serious? You went and got a legit. Yeah, truck? man. Where did you find that? No, no, I, no, I don't. I didn't buy nothing. Somebody gave one of the other coaches gave it to me. Uh, you say uh, you football practice. Yeah, but where <laughs> where did you where did that person buy that? Is that is that some online Amazon? <clears throat> yeah, you go on Amazon to find they even got him at Walmart. Electronic yeah, he got he gets whistle. his from somebody. I guess when COVID happened, you couldn't you were on, I know here you couldn't use the whistle that you blow. You, so, you, whoa, 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 You guys weren't allowed to use a whistle that you blow on? You weren't supposed to, no. That's a new one. Now that's a new one. I didn't know that. I, I didn't know that either. But what? he's been using one for the last two and a half, like two or three years. Oh, and so, crazy. yeah, came, we do a conditioning for you football. And I'm wondering why well, I keep hearing, a, keep hearing a whistle. A whistle out here. <laughs> no, Man, damn well, we're supposed to have so, one. And, and so I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking, I'm standing right next to her. But I'm looking at his hand. Yeah. Yeah, in his hand, just, just pushing a little whistle. They loud as shit, too. I was like, damn. Now, let me get one. Like, where you get that from? Oh, man, I got a whole pack of them at the house. I got a I'll whole pack of them. <laughs> yeah, so he, he came back. We had a condition the next day. He came out and he gave me one. I was like, hell yeah. So let me ask something. So you, you just hit it. It does that little tweet, tweet, and then that's it? Or they can yep. it do a long one? Yeah, like- you, if you hold it, you like, as many times you hit it, it's going to whistle. So if you hold it, it could be a long whistle. It could be a short whistle. God, yeah, so many times I got to Google it. this. I'm going to Google that. Yeah, I'm going to put that thing on a chain or something. I'm gonna, that's what's up. So yeah, I, I try to put it on my lanyard, but. Yeah. 
It, it don't fit on my lanyard, but that's it has crazy. its own lanyard that came with it. So that's crazy. So how? So okay. So how's yeah. how's coaching going on? How's it feel? I don't know. I ain't been. Yeah, but- <laughs> <laughs> when that, I went that day that we had that one day I got my whistle. I sat there for about 10, 15 minutes. I said, it's boring. I left. Okay, well, I, I think you should promote the coaching a little bit better than that. But that's, I thought, you know, you could have BS your way through that one. That was like an easy layup. Oh, it's exciting. Good to be there with the kids again. You just went ahead and was like, I was there nah. 15 minutes and left. Yeah, man. man this man, this is the weight kids, room. Man. This is what the weight, this is what happened in the weight room. You you were in the weight room 10, 15 minutes. You just left because you were bored. <laughs> what you did every time, man. Hey. I mean, it's like, like this is youth league though. So, I haven't brought it out there to the high school yet. I'll probably do that tomorrow. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, but nah, the youth league, it's just, it's just conditioning. Man. You got a bunch of the little Caucasian kids think they the shit, and they come out here with gloves and arm sleeves and spats. Like, bitch, this is conditioning, bitch, and you're terrible. <laughs> Hey man, so, you ain't gotta describe the kid. It's <laughs> terrible. The kid. I'm like, we got a cat that come out there, and he, little Caucasian kid. He come, he double gloved up, got a mouthpiece and arm sleeves and tights, and yeah. got his hair braided and a headband, like, and a ski mask. What the hell a you doing? A ski mask? What the fuck is he got a ski? Mask? <laughs> He's trying to rob seven eleven. No, one of one, not no, one of those little masks that um. The little mask that put that kids be wearing that why little they put mask that, thing. Yo, it's too hot for that. Why? Did, why would you put that on? Man, look, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, look, it's it, it's ninety four ninety four degrees when we're out long, there running around. And how long were you off from youth hmm? football coaching? You you took what two years? A year. A year. Did you miss it at all? Yeah. No, not at all. Yeah. So I'm so same yeah. shit here, man. I mean. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm enjoy coaching my son. I'm, I'm enjoy coaching the team I'm coaching right now. I mean, there, it is it is a loaded, loaded talent, uh, talented team. It looks really good out there. Um, I'm, I'm I don't know. I miss you know with the kids and you know uh, the camaraderie and, and taking care of them. What I don't miss is the extra bullshit that goes on. You know, I, that's what yeah, I don't. I don't, I, I don't miss none of that stuff. I don't miss the parents. I don't miss. I don't miss that extra. So. Yeah, I get I get that stuff all I get criticized all the time about, you know, where I took my son and, and stuff like that and people just, you know, telling me, you know, you should you should have taken him over there and you know, take him over here, take him over there. And and what it is is, you know, where I took him to, I took him one away from stupidity, you know what I mean? You know, I got tired of, of when a kid comes to, you know, comes to practice the kid's eyes are bloodshot red. He smelled like gas, you know, like smell like weed and stuff. You're like, man, I'm I'm done with that. I don't, I don't, need, I don't need none of that stuff, man. And I yeah, I, I, I really don't thing. like the violence. I don't like I don't like how they. I don't know, man. I, I think I got I old. Oh, wait, wait. No, you good. I just got old, man. Nah, I mean I feel that part. But now I'm saying like I know you live over there in the Tampa area and. I'd be watching all this stuff on YouTube while I'm at work. And it was like the toughest, like the toughest places in Central Florida or whatever. And uh, PV pulled up. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. That's where our old kid played at. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Just how they get down. Yeah, but it, it's all, remember, you know, it's all promotion stuff, man. You know, that, that play, PV is not like that, man. You know yeah, what I'm saying? It, it, it's, it's not they, went, they went in that, they walked, they walked the whole block, this is the one street. Yeah. And then they walked like five houses down and they were just saying how rough it is and this and that. And people, no, like, no, the neighborhood now, na- the neighborhood, yeah, yeah, the neighborhood, yeah, it's like that. You know, you, you got to be on, you got to be on a swivel over there. I, I agree with that. I, I was talking about youth football wise. Youth football is not like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, and I know people that listen, because I get comments all the time and, Stuff like that. I know, and I'll read an email here in a little bit about youth football, but um, I don't know, man. I, how can I say this? I'm, I'm gonna offend a lot of people. You know me, bro. I try not. I try. I always speak to try to speak my mind. Like, look, this is what it is. Tampa people believe, and I'm saying this again. Tampa people believe Tampa football is the best football in the state of Florida. 
and they are fucking insane. You know what I mean? Like, you're good for around here. You know what I mean? You're, you're good. As soon as you step outside the county and you get your head busted in, you know, it, then people are looking like, oh, you just embarrassed the rest of Tampa. And the problem is, it's a lot of times it ain't a good coach that's going over somewhere to go play somewhere. It's one of these coaches that, you know, gets a loaded team and sees a lot of talent, doesn't really practice, and then steps off somewhere and gets his head fucking beat in 40 to zero. And, and you know, God bless him for being ambitious. Fight. Well, yeah, exactly. God bless him for being ambitious, but... You know, I was like that, too, when I was first starting coaching. I was like that, too, for the first couple of years. I wanted to prove so much, but I realized it's, the you know, it took me a while to realize, okay, I'm, what I'm fucking am I proving? I ain't got shit to prove. I got to take care of these kids and, you know, put them in the right position and put them in the right uh, uh, place to be successful. And, and then I started thinking, you know, because first it was football, all about football. First it was about, okay, let me, let me take care of football and win championships. And then it was like, yo, I'm doing that for the wrong reasons. I'm going to tell you like this, bro. In 2016, I had a football team because I, I coached at a, at a Progress Village. I had a football team that if they did a ESPN 30 for 30 on, right, of youth football in Tampa, that will go down as, as one of, not the, not the, not by any shot, but one of the best teams uh, um, of that year and, and of the next two years because they played damn near everybody. I had great parents. Great kids, everybody was focused, but we went undefeated, bro. Won championships, played out, you know, national level, bro. It was the worst year of coaching I ever had, bro. We won everything, but it was the worst year of coaching I ever had. I've never had so many people from Tampa hate the fact that we that we were winning. You know what I mean? And I I, I wasn't used to that stuff. You know? Does that make sense? Like. You know, back in Palm Bay, when, when somebody's playing and winning, you might not want them to, to you know, you when you're playing them, you want to win. But when they move on, the whole goddamn town, the whole goddamn county is behind them. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you're like, okay, I hope they go, hey, good luck to you. I hope they win. And who are you going for? I got to go for the home team. You know what I'm saying? Versus somebody else. You know what I mean? And it's, it's not like that over here. It's not like that over here. They, they prey on everybody's downfall. They prey on each other's downfall. They make fun of that shit. They put them in what they call a church group on su- on Sundays in on Facebook, and they just they just ridicule the shit out of you. You know what I'm saying? It's everybody in the Tampa area making memes and all this stuff, and and the adults like, yo, this is fun, it's hilarious. And then there's like seven guys that don't take that shit. You know, they're not, they're not laughing, and then their homeboys ain't laughing because you're making fun of a team that his son's on, and then they carry that shit all week long, and then they want to go out there and, and you know. Now they can see you. You can't hide behind the Facebook no more. Right. And now they see you, and then they want to act a goddamn fool. And you're just like, man, I, I didn't come out here for none of that shit. So, um, I don't know, man. I don't know. The email that I got was, yeah. email I got was, it was in a Facebook group, and then they they screenshotted the Facebook group to me. I'm not going to mention it. It's not worth mentioning. It's a Jerry Springer group. But um, I call it Jerry Springer because that's all they want to do is just, you know, talk drama and, and do bullshit. Um, but one of the questions in there, which it, which it was a good question, on, so I appreciate, you know, you know who you are for sending me this email and the screenshot. The email was, the the question was, um, the three-point stance in Pop Warner versus other leagues. So is the rules in Pop Warner pie or, or whatever the case may be? Uh, are they crazy? I thought you were going to tell you, but they're not allowed to get three-point stances in Pop Warner. Yeah, they're not. It's something they started like three years ago. You know what I'm saying? Or four years ago, I think it was. Something like that. So what ended up happening was, um, in Pop Warner, if you don't know and you're listening, in Pop Warner, uh, if you are 11 years old down, all the way to 6, 6 to 11, you're not going to be in a three-point stance. They don't believe in defense or offense. They also don't do kickoffs from 11 years old down to 6 years old. Now, some people have a problem with this, Tyrone. And I've coached in Pop Warner and I've coached in other leagues that were opposite. You know, you could be, you can have kickoffs, you know, as young as six years old, seven, eight years old. You can have three point stances as young as six years old. So I've, I've, I've coached in both leagues. And I'm going to hear your opinion and I'll give you mine. But what do you think? Is it, is it well. affecting the kids? Is it delaying the process of learning football? Because there's a lot of people that says, oh, that's not real football, you, you know. That's why Pop Warner's a pie league and blah, 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 blah. 
for me, it depends on my age group, my kids. Like when I coached my son, when we were in the old divisions, junior and senior divisions, like thirteen, like twelve U and fourteen U, we didn't go in three point stance at all. But that was part of our blocking scheme. And so, um, well, that's on offense. Defense, we were at three point, four point stances, and we were coming. I believe if you're really trying to coach the kids the game, yes, they got nothing to do with three point stance. They even flag kids here going three point stances. Yeah, but what at and what so, point do you need to teach that? So that this, that's my thing. So from day one, it's, well, it's a football move. Yeah, but I, I guess so, man. I mean, I'm not, and I, not because my son's in Pop Warner, not because he's in Pop Warner, but you know, it, yeah. I've, 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 can I teach three point stance? Absolutely. Can I teach how a kid how to fire off a football? Of course, I can. I, I can do it. And and respectfully, my, my offensive lines that I've coached throughout the years have always been better than most people's, uh, most people's defensive lines. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes have been a lot better. In youth football, has been a lot better um, just because I know the proper way to do it. But is it a necessity is basically what I'm trying to say. Is it a necessity to have them at six, seven, eight years old? And I say, I say, I say yes and I say no. I, I don't, I'm, I'm indifferent because I know the benefits of why you do it, of putting the three-point stance and doing that stuff, but I don't – is it a necessity? No, it ain't that. You don't need to teach a six, seven, eight-year-old, nine-year-old, you know, uh, a three-point stance. Ten, 11, 12 going on. Yeah, of course. 12 and up, uh, absolutely, of course, but I don't think it's a necessity, though. No, it's not a necessity. Like I said, man, my, without the older boys – we didn't when I cut. We did, or we didn't get into a three point stance, and then unless we were going like short yardage and we just trying to get lower than defender. But then once we got, we went back down to eight U to eight year olds and stuff. We taught them three point stances, but we used them sparingly, 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 however you want to say it. Only because half the time the kids jumped off sides anyway, or. If we were doing a, a freeze play, they can't stay in the stands for more than two seconds before they start getting wobbly and start falling right. and shit. And so, looking around. Yeah. So, yeah, so we'll have the right side of our line cock their foot, heel to toe, and they squat and left side, put their left foot at back and squat, and that's how we came off the ball. Yeah, I, I thought it's more so, so when, when kids stand up, I think it's, it's not more dangerous. I think it's, well, maybe. When kids stand up and you you do a pulling guard, so like for instance, Jaden's team, you know, Jaden was on an eleven year old team that that can't pull or not pull, um, can't be in a three point stance. So I was like, you can't, you're not gonna put him in a three point stance. No. So it made pulling so much easier because I right. can see the defensive end now. I'm standing up. I can see where he's at. I can down block the shit out of these guys because you can't be in a three point stance. There's nothing that says that you can't, you know, when the ball snap, aim at the hip and start driving them and pushing them and aim. You know what I mean, like. Get your hands out. Of t- There's nothing. There, that's all regular football from that point on. But right. I thought it was a little bit. I thought it was a little bit dangerous of a, having a kid that can stand up and having you know that one good offensive lineman. That kid stands up and I can see where the kickout's going to happen. I can kick him out. Shit. I thought that was a little yeah. bit down a three point stance. It takes a little skill to be able to get out of the stands, turn, run, find out who you got to block, and then you know that collision is is a lot harder. Uh, when it happens in a three-point stance because he's he's so low firing off. But, you know, these guys argue about this shit on, on Facebook all the time, and it's they they, they clown each other's league, um, and it's crazy. Like, how many leagues do you guys have over there? Do you guys only have one? Uh, we have well, one one league is playing. One t- Rockledge is playing in the mid-Florida Classic, the mid- mid-Florida League. And the rest of us are all in one league, and you know, we we do have three Pop Warner teams over here too. So what's 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 the leagues that are over there? What are their names? You know, well Pop Warner. Well, I know you got Pop Warner. Is there another one? Uh, we have the Mid Florida, and then we have uh, the ACY, the Atlantic Coast Conference League. Hmm. And it goes all the way from Tysville all the way down to Fort Pierce now. Of course, so, so over here. One of them is gone now. Well, two of them are actually gone. But at one point over here, it was Florida League, Tri-County, TBYFL, Pop Warner, and Mid-Florida Leagues. 
These were the leagues over here. And yep. each league yeah, had about 15, 14 to 16 teams. Yeah, we played in the um, – when I was coaching the Palm Bay Rockets for during COVID, we played in the Elite League and – Man, we we played Tampa teams and yeah, but my boy was just they were terrible anyway. So yeah, but like the, the, I don't know, man. This is my gripe, okay? And then and then we'll move on. My gripe is this: each one of these parents and coaches got so much to say about each other's leagues, right? They got to sit there and say, "Oh, this league is better than that one," or "This league isn't as tough," or "This league is tougher," or you know, whatever the case may be. And it's fucking hilarious because all the leagues suck. Like that's it, like, bro. I've never seen a youth football league that had sixteen teams that were fucking phenomenal. They're just like sixteen, you know, dog ass teams. You know what I'm saying? Like, never. You're always gonna have a couple teams that are playing football. Coaches trying to teach them what they gotta teach them. You know, and God bless them. They're, they're out there playing they're, and they're trying. You're good to go. But right. one league isn't better than the other league. One league has something to offer than another league, of course, but. These guys are so caught up on what league's better, beating their chest. It's like, yo, you are, you guys are doing all that stuff. Do you even know football terminology? Like, th- that's – that's a, <laughs> these guys – I'm coaching kids now that when I ask them certain questions, like, for instance, I have a wide receiver group that when I ask them what's a cover two, cover three, cover four, they can't tell me. They they can't yeah. tell me. What's your, and I ask them, what's your favorite route on a man beater? They're like, what are you talking about? One kid told me no Diddy. One kid literally goes, no Diddy. I was like, no, not man beater. God damn it, not beat. Not like that, man. <laughs> I'm talking about playing man versus man like somebody's covering you. Right? But they don't they came from a different team, different league. Coaches never yeah. went over the, coaches never went yeah, over they this. Don't shit. Know what they're looking at. Yep. And, and, and bro, at. we're we're talking, we're thirteen now. You know, you're supposed to learn that when you're eleven. Man, my boy, my quarterback knows what he's looking at. Cover two. I mean, over here you gonna see five threes. All you gonna see is five man, six man fronts over here. No yeah. matter what. What about the I'm older sure. ages? Same. Yeah, older ages go five and six man fronts. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, like like it's these leagues that they stack their team and they got a bunch of athletes on the team and they just rely on the athletes to win games and it's like you ain't coaching these boys for nothing. Right. Like we got a couple kids from a league over at Heritage the High School and hell of athletes. They don't know shit about football. Yeah. Like my brother and uh Coach Ang they they like Coach Angley runs Alabama's defense. Yeah. And so it's a, it's very ter- a lot of lot of different terms and different terminology and stuff. They have no clue what's going on. Right, right, right. You you, you tell them they jam them. They have no idea what a jam is. You know, yeah. play play out play inside eye. They don't know what that means. They have no clue. Mm-hmm. We had a kid like, oh, coach, he ain't got an eye on his jersey. The hell are you Jesus. talking about, son? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> So it's like, ah. All right, this is why we gonna do seven on seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I, I, same same shit over here, man. We got defensive kids that, you know, I'm like, hey, line up at the one tech and let's 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 go ahead and let's go let's show four, let's show an even front. Let's go ahead and do this this. And they're it looks like I'm speaking a different language. They have no clue. I had one kid which is who was on our team for like maybe ten minutes. He did one practice and he left to go back to the other team because he said it's too hard. Um. He went ahead and, you know, made a comment to, to my son Jaden was like, you know, Jaden was like, hey, we're just trying to get ready for high school. He's like, well, I'm not in high school. I don't have to get ready for high school until I get in high school. I was like, well, okay, well, have that mentality you want to. Good luck with you. You know what yeah, I mean? But that's most of these kids now anyway. They don't yeah. give two dams. Most of these coaches, like we had coaches over here, every time we turn around, they're taking a picture. Like, yeah. it's conditioning right now. Taking pictures with the boys and – like, y'all just here for yeah, y'all just here for the picture. You ain't yeah. even trying to coach nobody. Well, that's like, what, that's what, I, I listen to me when they blame mm-hmm. when they talk shit about kids. These all oh, this generation of football players. I'm like this generation of football players. Look at this generation of coaches. Exactly. I still don't. I listen, man. No offense, to anybody. Well, no, nah, I fuck that offensive. I'm, I mean, I, I'm not gonna. I am not coming to. If I'm a parent, I come with football practice. And I look at a coach and he's in sandals, or, or flip flops with his toes out. No nah, man, I'm not. I'm not letting you, my kid, coach you. I, now, now I gotta ask you questions about football to make sure you even know football. Hey man, sometimes you know it's hard out in the streets. And when I was wearing boots every day, 
I come to practice my Crocs. Okay. My feet need to breathe, man. God bless you. Look the part for me. Mm-hmm. Look the part for me. We taking this mm-hmm. seriously. Right? Look, look the part for me, man. You're right. But if I have, I was wearing boots for nine, ten hours a day. So I, was, I get to practice. I gotta throw them Crocs on. Like like bro man said, I gotta the bunnies breathe. Well, in Tampa, in Tampa, they do this. They they just they're Facebook uh, keyboard gangsters, man. They just. They just get on there and rap and talk some junk, and that's it, man. They're not really. Well, that's, that's every coach, because I know it's a damn shame, you know, though, bro. Like it's whatever, whatever league the the Jags are in. Yeah, my son, my son was still playing youth football, and we had a murder team too, and we tried so hard to get them to play us. Whatever team over there, the Tampa Jags or whatever, yeah. Yeah. we try to get them to play us so bad because they because they was talking shit on one of the little forums I was on. We'll take all the heat, blah blah blah. I'm like, okay, hey, we can strap this shit up. Yeah. And I was like, we we start practice July second, and then I was like, we can do, we can run a scrimmage or something. We'll come to y'all too. Yeah. And, and then, so I don't know what he did, and then he got finally got back to me like two three days later, and he's like, nah, we can't do that. We can't do that. I look, bitch, I don't need that much practice. I've had the same boys for four years now. Yeah. And we we know we running. Well, I remember that team that you coached. They were loaded as shit. And so it was just like, dude, like, yeah, but Tampa Jags, Tampa Jags, man, you know, they, I, I, t- I will say this to them, uh, you know, I don't like to give credit to a lot of people, man, but Tampa Jags don't usually buck from nobody. Like, if, they, if they're going to play somebody, they're going to play. So if they couldn't play you, Tyrone, then it was a business decision because they were going to go somewhere to make money because a lot of teams pay to play them too, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I don't care. Don't talk shit. Oh, I well, agree. Well, I agree with that. Well, yeah. well, it, well, it was the second time they ducked us though because they came to a. There was a tournament over in Orlando that Richie, um, I mean, Richie um, Clement, 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 Clement. I tell you what. He, what he, year? He, what year was it? And what level? Uh, it was. We were juniors, so that probably been. They probably been like 12, 12 you. At what year? And though? I want to say to 2018. Okay, 2018 junior, so you guys were 12 years old. Hmm. I don't know who it was, but Richie. I, I think it was. Yeah, Richie Claremont throws these, these tournaments like yeah. before the season yeah, every yeah. year. And we went to one because we, we had played this team in uh, eight man that year. Yeah. And he was like, hey, man, keep the same number, keep your info the same. I'm going to bring your team to one of my tournaments. I'm like, all right, cool. He paid for everything. And they were there. Mm. And we were supposed to play, but it got into a lightning delay. And so the field was shut down for like an hour, hour and a half. Mm. And then we came back, but they never came back to play us. But they were there the next day. But they didn't want to play us. Yes, yeah, so I, okay. yeah, so I don't know what happened there. I, I, I know who the coach was in that year, but I don't. I don't know. I don't know the specifics to that, so I can't speak on it. But again, bro, it's Tampa, man. These, you know, these guys are gonna talk shit, and then they're gonna go, you know, drive for Coca Cola the next day. They're not gonna do shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, because like for me, it's like yeah, because everybody's like, "Oh, you should take your team to go play the Lauderdale Kings." Huh? Hell no. I don't have that kind of time. Yeah, right. Hell no. I got about three. I got about three or four burns, and the rest of them just just. Crazy redneck boys. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. Hitchy, but the problem is we got catchy. Well, we're gonna have we're gonna have more coach. Like there's people that wanted to talk about youth football. They want to get on here. There's a couple of them, uh, especially, and it'll give you a better idea, man. When I when I put more Tampa people on here, that you you'll see what I'm talking about. Because I don't want. I, I know it sounds like one person griping and grunting, and you know, it sounds like I'm complaining or whatever. But when you when you get these other coaches from over here, man, that. You know, I know for a long time they, they they think the same way. They're like, "Yo, this shit is this shit went left too quick." So, um, but that's okay. That's youth football, man. Look, let's let's move on to this, man. Kansas, I, I told you before we jumped on, man, about the Kansas lawmakers that are trying to change, are trying to get the Kansas City Chiefs over to them, which I think is hilarious to do. Um, let me read it to you here, man. So it says. Kansas lawmakers approve plan to lure Chiefs from Missouri. Kansas is making a serious run of becoming, and this is ESPN, I'm sorry, this is ESPN uh, Associated Press, came out like June 18th, said uh, Kansas is making a serious run at becoming the new home for the reigning Super Bowl champions with legislators approving a plan Tuesday 
for luring both the Chiefs and the Major League Baseball team, the Kansas City Royals, away from Missouri. Bipartisan legislation, super majorities okayed the measure to authorize state bounds to help finance new stadiums and practice facilities for both teams on the Kansas City side of the metropolitan area of 2.3 residents. Uh, three Super Bowl victories in five years, Travis Kelsey's romance with Taylor Swift, have made the Chiefs perhaps the area's most celebrated civic asset. Uh, the plan from the Republican-controlled legislative co- goes next to Democratic Gov. Laura Kelly, where she stopped short of promising to sign it. She said in the statement that Kansas now has the opportunity to become a professional sports powerhouse. So my question to you, man, what do you feel about this, man? What do you think Kansas City is going to feel about this and the rest of Missouri? Like, what do you... What do you think? First, first of all, I, up until probably no bullshit, probably like what? Mahomes been leaving about five, six years now. Yeah, just about. Uh, different. I thought Kansas City was always in Kansas. Anyway, so, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't nope. realize. I didn't realize until my wife, whose dad lives in Missouri. And he's like, yeah, man, the cheese, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, the cheese are in Kansas. Yeah. Nah, they're right, they're, right, they're right on the border of Kansas and Missouri. They're right there. They're in Missouri. And I was like, oh, shit, I didn't know that. And I just found out, um, t- I, I was today a year old when I found out that the K- Kansas City Chiefs were in Missouri as well. I thought they were in Kansas City. Yeah. So, yeah. Some new I, mean, I, it's, I mean, they could probably pull the Royals. Right, they're not going to pull the Chiefs. You don't think so? You don't think they'll be able to pull them? Hell no. Man, they got Air, man, Arrowhead Stadium is sacred. Yeah, I, that's, that's that's sacred ground. Let's so was, the so was the yeah, but so was the Coliseum uh, when the Raiders played in L.A. and they took them and moved to <laughs> Oakland. That's Al Davis' fault, though. Yeah, well, yeah, but I mean, it was sacred to play <laughs> in the Coliseum too, my boy. Right, but Al Davis, that was Al Davis. That, like that's the, the owner of the team. He moved them, not yeah. Not the city and the mayor is trying to trying to lure them in. Man, now let's say pick up the whole stadium of Arrowhead and move it to Kansas City. To move it to Kansas I would city, have to. Then. I would have to look at what I would have to do is I would have to look at the area that they're talking about and see like you know like what are you what what are you really offering? You know what I mean? Like I mean, I look at. I mean, I mean, how many how many people really know that Kansas City is in Missouri? Well, they know some that listen to the show will now know, but I mean, right? Um, like, how many people really knew that? I don't know. I mean, so, I, I understand Kansas wants to get in the in the you know sports business. I guess you know. What I mean, you're already a, a basketball state anyway. Um, I don't know, I, man. I look, I look at it as like just like what the Giants and the Jets. You're in New York, but you playing you play in New Jersey. Mm. So I yeah. mean. I do, but who who builds the stadium? So let's say let's just hypothetically say everything gets signed, everything gets turned over, and they get said the like who makes that stadium? That stadium's gonna take five years to be built, three years to be built, whatever the case may be, it ain't gonna be built in a year. Oh, Kansas City gonna build the stadium. Well, Kansas is gonna build a stadium. Kansas is gonna build a stadium, yeah. But the money comes out of Kansas City's pocket. No, it comes out of Kansas' pocket. Yeah, the state, right? Yeah, because they want the team. They want them to move. They're going to have to build a stadium. How much do you think a stadium costs? Like $500 million? $700 million? And Jerry Jones costs almost a billion. Well, yeah, he got that humongous jumbotron <laughs> in the middle right. of the stadium. And then, and then what, the Jags doing their renovations. There's a $750 million. Damn. Yeah, man. Well, I, hope, just... I, I, don't, I don't want Kansas. I do not want the Chiefs to move to Kansas. Just also, just because you know, as I get older, you know, it seems like everybody's trying to take away a piece of my little, you know, history too, like my little piece of childhood and all that stuff. Watching, because you know, before Mahomes and all that, man, I enjoyed watching, you know, Larry Johnson run the ball, Priest Holmes run the ball. You know what I mean? I enjoyed right. watching Joe Montana at, on the tail end of his career go to the Kansas City Chiefs and then beat the 49ers in the in the playoffs uh, to get them kicked out so he can move on. I mean, I I enjoyed all those things. It'd be, you know, it's just like watching, you know, when Washington became the commanders. You know, it's like, okay, I guess we're going to take away a piece of football. I mean, it's been like this for 50 years, but okay, well, now we got to do it. Um, so I, 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 I hope that Apparently the, the new owner group for the commanders, they're trying to get the Redskins name back. Yeah, that's right. I got, saw they, that on they, the – They got a petition going on. Well, the, I saw the petition, but I saw the – also the um, – something was filed in court. It was like a week ago, two weeks ago, something like that. Something got Native filed in Americans. court. Yeah. Yeah, they want to, yeah, they, they want this stuff back. 
Yep, because he's a because they said he's a real guy. Yeah. It wasn't like they're like they're portraying a, a mocking Indian. He's a real chief. So I know, I know. and I, again, I, I, either way, I was fine. I mean, I just I just hate when they take a little bit of of what we. You know what we know. You know what we grew up on. A little bit of it. Yeah, they're, they're always going to be the Redskins. I mean, I think Commanders too. is stupid. Yeah, it's a horrible name. What a horrible name. Horrible um, uniforms. Yeah, uh, it's horrible. Everything. This helmet looks stupid. Um, okay, so here's the other part to this, man. So here we go. Falcons put Matt Ryan into the Ring of Honor. Going to be happening this year for Matt Ryan, man. God bless him. Uh, you know Matt Ryan. Uh, the, uh, if you don't know Matt Ryan, the only reason you would know him is because he blew a twenty-eight to three lead against the Patriots in the Super Bowl. Um, despite that, though, successor. I, I, yeah, he's a he's a backup to Michael Vick. But um, no, 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 no. He, he never backed him up. No, I know. He drafted he, the following year. Right, right, right. I know what you meant. But I know what you meant. I'm mm-hmm. just saying, like he, they're going to enshrine him into the Ring of Honor there, which is nice. Um, I think me and you agree with this. He 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 does deserve to be there, he truly does. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I mean, hell, when they lost Michael Vick, everybody thought that they were going to be terrible, and they drafted Matt Ryan, and yeah. he held a, he held the ship. Oh, he had kept the ship afloat for how yeah. many years he was there. Yeah. I think it's a good. I think it's a good thing. I do too, man. I mean, and, and they got some stats here, man. They got Ryan uh, retired from the NFL in April, spent 14 seasons with the Falcons, taking them to the Super Bowl. Yeah, he set franchise records for career passing with 59,735 yards, uh, 367 touchdowns, had a passer rating uh, of 94.6 for eight straight seasons while leading the Falcons to five postseason berths um, and had a 120-102 to 102 regular season record. Um, pretty good. Not, not too shabby at all. So yeah. congratulations to Matt Ryan and becoming a, in, a, in the ring of honor over there at Atlanta. I'm sure that's going to be. Uh, awesome to see. I wonder when they do. Let me see. During oh, it'll be September twenty second, the Falcons game against the Kansas City Chiefs in Week Three. Ryan ceremony will uh, come October third when the Falcons host the Tampa Bay Bucks in Week Five. Both are prime time games. So they're. I they're figured. I figured, I, I figured they've been the Bucks. It's gonna be the Bucks. I would think so too because it's, it, aren't they in the same division? Or, no, they're not. Yeah, yeah they, they are. They are. So I would think it'd be the Bucks. Uh, maybe a division game. Give it hype and sell more tickets. You know what I mean? Uh, I think it would be pretty cool to see that, man. The other thing that came by my Instagram, man, and I had to go look it up, man, was Notre Dame. Did you see the Notre Dame has the loaded NFL veterans on there, Plesco Burris, Ike Taylor, and freaking Jerome Bettis all up on the team? I don't know if you saw that or not. Oh, yeah, I saw it. My bad, I was on mute. Yeah. Uh, but, but, yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Didn't all of them play together in Pittsburgh? Yes. They all were together in Pittsburgh right before Plexco shot himself and, and when he was, mm-hmm. he was with the Giants. God, I'm looking at the picture, man. They all look alike. Bro. They they are spitting image of their father. Jesus. Plexco Burris, that's his son, definitely. Yeah, Jerome Bennett's son got them lips. Well, he got the same face. Same. I mean, it's the same. Same he's face. He's as big as his dad. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he plays running back either, though. I think he plays linebacker or something. Oh, he does? I see. think so. Let me take a look here. Um... Doesn't say the positions. Wish they did though. I don't see their positions on here. I see I Taylor, Lajbaz, Jerome Bass Jr. Overlap on the No, I don't see anything about their position. I mean he could be. I don't know if he is or not though. Hmm. Interesting. They're all committed to Notre Dame, all going to Notre or took a picture of Notre Dame. No, they're committed to Notre Dame. Yeah. They're all committed, yeah. Yeah. That's a raise. That's crazy. I think there's also two of the teams. Recent graduate transfers, Jordan Clark, RJ Oben, have fathers who both spent more or spent more than a decade in the league as well. Jordan's father, Ryan, who just missed the uh, Steelers trio, but overlapped with Taylor and Burris when the last when later in Pittsburgh in 2012. So oh, that's right. Uh, Jordan Clark did transfer to Notre Dame. Yep, yep, yep. They got the Arizona State. Yeah, they let me see. Bur- uh, North 25 recruiting class is James Flanagan. Whose father Jim had a nine year stint. There's a lot of people on here. There's one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine kids that had fathers in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Mm-hmm. Freshman Kennedy Erlacher. <laughs> when you hear Erlacher, you know who that is. Um, so it says this fall, Oban and Clark will join a roster already filled with NFL league 
veterans, incoming freshmen Kennedy Erlacher and Bryce Young are the sons of Pro Football Hall of Famer Brian Erlacher and Brian Young. Offensive lineman Rocco Spindler's father, Mark, played eight seasons in the league. Benjamin Morrison, father, Daryl, spent three seasons with the Washington Commanders. Uh, rounding out the list is defensive lineman Howard Cross the third, who shares his name with his father. Bro, that's a lot of kids, man. Yeah. What, I mean, what, is, Notre Dame, what is Notre Dame doing? They coach. Oh, I guess so are the NIL deals. <laughs> Jesus. Well, I think they that and I think they're I think they're coach didn't they coach playing the league? I, I don't know. I gotta have to I have to research that. That's a lot of kids to be on a Notre Dame, you know, roster. The dads all had to get together. That that can't be coincidence. Well, I mean, hell, they all grew up the their kids grew up together. So well, that's true too. Though so, yeah, but those three, but like Erlacher and the other ones. So those are kids. Like, yeah. That's that's a pretty amazing roster to go get. It's a hell of a booster club too if you put that together. Right. So that 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 money. The NIL money is, is sickening. Yeah, I know. Um, other thing that crossed my wire here, man, was Alvin Kamara having contract issues. He still hasn't gotten his contract, man, from these guys. Um, I don't know. What What does it mean when you're when one of your star players on your team is is just well, I mean, they should hold out for contract. I want all these guys to get paid, but what kind of impact does that have on the team? You know what I mean? Well, I mean, yeah, I think, too, man. <clears throat> Kamara's holding out for a big contract. He's not going to get it. He's in his 30s. Yeah. He ain't, he ain't he already got his big payday. He just needs to either request a trade or get cut and get picked up by somebody else. I don't think he wants to be there. I, right? I, I mean, I, I, I like Alvin Kamara. I, I really do. He held, he held out last year. Did he? Yeah. Yeah, see, so it, he really wants not he really must not really want to be there. Um let's see, Kamara's agent Brad Sicala Sicala told NFL Network that the early departure was contract related. Hmm. Kamara's status moving forward is unknown after he skipped the final practice of minicamp. It says here, I haven't had a chance to talk to him, so I'm not sure why he wasn't out there for the rest of the practice, Coach Dennis Allen said. Kamara did not go to OTAs this offseason before returning from mandatory minicamp, which has been his routine for a few years now. Camaro said last year that he wants to be in the New Orleans long term. I want a lifetime contract. I want to be here forever, Camaro said in training camp last year. So you're right. I love it here. So, yeah. So what do you think they do? You think they, they give him the contract or do they, they move on and try to get three or four players for him? They're going to either trade him or cut him. Yeah. So... I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Well, shoot, we forgot, we forgot uh, what, hometown, hometown hero, Marcus Mason, with your, with your Dolphins. With my Dolphins, man. Look, no, I have it right on my list. Now, listen to me, man. Hey, I've never asked him for anything. Never. I need, I need, I need a ticket. I need to, I need, I'm, man, damn, I need backstage. I need to go back in the locker room. Yeah, you and you and all of Melbourne. I, man, I know that, man. I know, man. I feel like I, should, I, mean, I feel like I should be up there on the list, man. That's what I should feel like. You and all of Melbourne, because yeah. everybody, everybody sweating. I think that's dope, know. though. I think that's so dope, though, man. That's that's for him. You know, I, I'm talking shit, but I, I'm that's dope for him, man. He'll love my no, But nobody was talking like that when Joe got traded to the Dolphins. What do you mean? When Joe got traded to the Dolphins, yeah, nobody blow it up like this. Uh, yeah, that's true. No. No, no, nobody did. Yeah, you're right about that. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. You, you're right about that. But again, different time, different scenario. The Dolphins at that time weren't really that good of a team. You know, you got, you got. We're way, 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 way better now than we were a long time ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we're we're way better now. Um. So I don't know. I, I like Marcus May. Let's see. You're six foot, two hundred seven pounds. Uh, played at the University of Florida. Regular season, yeah, man, he looks good, man. Looks good, yeah. man. Ah, oh, man, yeah, nah. I can't wait. That secondary is gonna be nice. That secondary is gonna be real nice, my guy. Man, they got his whole birth date up here too. That's crazy. That's crazy. Drafted round two to the New York Jets, then played in New Orleans, and now here in the Saints to cut May as part of cap move. Wow, I'm so happy they did that. Bro, he's gonna he's gonna be, listen to me. I don't know what it is when Florida kids go away, play for other teams, and they come back to Florida. It's like they're rejuvenated. 
Yeah, because all their friends come. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's the sun. The way, man. Yeah, but it's the sun, the energy here. You know, we we live where people on a vacation. Man, it's going to be awesome, man. That's going to be awesome. Now I got to get another jersey. I already have two of them from Jets and Saints. Now I got to get one more. So that's cool, man. But that's going to be good for Marcus, man. I, I like it, man. That's what I'm saying. Dolphin safety. Man. It's going to be a good little secondary, man. I'm not jumping on the bandwagon. I'm good. No, I ain't about a bandwagon. Just like I told you, support you know the home team, hometown, man. That's what's up, man. Reggie better. Let me tell you something. When we play Reggie's team, I'm definitely gonna be there talking shit. Oh we yeah. Playing at home or what? Let me look right now. Matter of fact, oh no, but I, I listen to you. I want to be there to talk cash. I'm see. being there with my Jag jersey. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you gonna do, huh? Yeah, I'm a Jalen Ramsey Jag jersey. I'm out, bird. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you silly man. Let me see NFL team Dolphins. Let me look at my schedule here. I hate that our bi- our bye week is so late in the year. I I really don't like that. That's not fair whatsoever. Uh oh oh we do we play oh it's only preseason. I which thought it was one, a regular. Though? I thought it was a regular season. What? Which one? One, two, or three? Um, it looks like one. Oh, the man, he ain't playing at all. Yeah, he ain't playing. None of them. None of the stars are gonna play that game. Oh man, that sucks, man. I'll never get to play Reggie's team. Trash. You know, did last year. Oh no, it says now. week three. I'm sorry, I read that wrong. Week three, we play at Tampa Bay. All right, so I'll be over there. Yeah, come on, come on through. It's a Friday night. Ooh, that's, that's that might be tough. <laughs> a Friday night? Yes, it's Friday, August twenty third, at seven thirty p.m. That's a, that's a preseason game. Yeah, I ain't gonna no damn preseason game. That's it. We're doing the third preseason game. We don't yeah, get to play during the regular season. That sucks. Well, week three stars usually play like the half or something. Yeah, but oh, he's a vet, so he he may not even play at all. Yeah, none of them will. We'll see how that goes. The last thing I had, man, was the NBA coaching carousel, man. This NBA offseason is going to be interesting at the very least. One of the other coaches to get the chop was old Monty Williams from Detroit. After one season spending with them, which you said earlier, he's going to get $65 million anyway, which must be nice. Um, right. He's been released. Uh, we still don't know who's going to be the Lakers coach. Um, now Detroit, because uh, like we predicted, like we said, that one coach wasn't going to be there. What, what was his name? Hurley, Matt Hurley or something, whatever it was. Yeah, the UConn coach. Yeah, the UConn. We, yep, we knew that he was not going to go. We called that immediately. Which, by the way, we should have a research team. We should, you know, we should, we should, we need like a research team to, to mark every time we're right about this shit. Um but he leaves, and he leaves with $65 million, man. The, my question is, man, what I don't like, and you tell me if I'm wrong for this, bro. I don't like that. Okay, a coach gets fired from Detroit. You saw what he did for one season. He He's going to be picked up somewhere else. Somebody else is going to give him a starting job. You know what I mean? Not necessarily because there's only like three teams that need coaches. Well, that, But that's what I'm saying. One of those teams can pick him up despite seeing what he did the last season. You know, it, Well, I, it, you can't blame him for that. Why? I mean, cause what my Magic are the what? They're like one. They're one of the youngest teams in the NBA, and his team is the youngest team. I think their 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 combined average is like twenty twenty point five or twenty one point five. Like they're right. young. Yeah, man. But Jesus they, Christ, they, they they won fourteen games. Son. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess, man. I just what I don't like is that you see the product. You know what he what he brings to the table. It's all he could bring. And we're still going to give him a job to, to go do his thing. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. That's the only thing that I have a little bit of trouble with. That's, that's mm. just me. I don't know. Like, and then just like we talked about before, like nobody wants a Laker job. And nobody wants nobody wants to coach with LeBron. And yeah. Jim Rohn was talking about that today. What was he saying? Why he was saying the same thing. We were pretty much saying he was like, you, you have all these coaches that you want to hire, but nobody's jumping for the L.A. job because nobody wants to coach that headache. And, and 
in LA. Nobody wants to coach LeBron. Yeah. Nobody wants to coach AD. Yeah. Like, and then you have a, a good new, you have a good nucleus on the team, and then you start trading pieces away. Then you bring in less some talent, putting more pressure on LeBron and AD, and it's like you know, nobody wants that. Nobody wants that pressure. So. Because every coach that goes in there knows it's LeBron's team. What LeBron says goes. And if he don't like you, he's going to run you off. Yeah. But he does, though. The only person that was able to stand it was Eric Spolster. Yep, and he won a championship without him. So, (laughs) even though it was a bubble championship, but it still counts. Yeah. It was, was, yep, so. Yep, so, like, I'm still trying to figure out what the NBA in season playoff thing is like I don't either. Out. I I don't like that shit either, man. I, I some people do. I, I don't in season tournaments. I don't know. They I don't know if they're trying to copy college and try to do some like little March Madness thing to try to you know boost some ratings or give a team that's really not gonna win shit in the in the championship or even have a chance to get some kind of participation trophy. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know what it, I don't know why it's. I, people explain it to me every single time, and I'm still saying it's unnecessary. It really is. It's unnecessary. I know. I don't. I know what you're but, saying. But I think what it is is it's forcing the stupid the superstars to play, so so the fans can see the superstars play because they sit out on time to get their yeah that, minutes managed. That's what they were telling. That that that's what they're telling me. So they can have you know it forces them to play because um, they get money for playing in the in season tournament. I get all that stuff. I, I do. I I understand it. I still think it's unnecessary. <laughs> It's like, look, man. We, we, I know we got to do this stuff, but come on, man. Like, I didn't, I didn't even know what was going on. I just woke up with more TV on, and the Lakers are celebrating. I'm like, um, it's only, it's only November. Yeah. Like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What I missed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. And and again, I I I get that these guys like, you know, like the money, get all stuff, but it's to me, it's just boring. I I don't know. Some people like it. Some people don't. Some people are different about it. You know, if like you said, it forces them to play. You get to see your favorite player play, and everybody's fucking happy. But I, I just it's unnecessary is what it is. To me, it is. Yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, hell, the NBA draft is next week. So I, I know, I know, I know, bro. That's what's funny about this. But that's all we got, man. I ain't got nothing else to talk about, man. Unless you want to talk about some politics. I'm just kidding. Like what? <laughs> just, like what? Don't you dare. I, I'm going to say, no, don't you dare. That's all I got, man. <laughs> Between our president that likes to hey, 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 crap yeah, himself. Calm down. And, calm, he doesn't crap himself. Um, th- no, that is the no. I shit myself no, face every time. Not. He, it was the I don't. Of, I thought there was a chair here. No, he That's just freezes president. like. No, no, no. I mean, he, he just crapped your pants. So he farted. <laughs> I know I fought. I'm face. not having this conversation with you because if we do this political <laughs> shit, it's gonna go forever. You guys join us the next time on On the Clock Radio. Next new episode on Monday. Still email me on the clock20 at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, on the clock radio sports talk, or, or on the clock. I'll see you later, Tyrone. Reggie needs to get back on here, man. Killing me, man. You got nine minutes. <laughs> For a podcast about sports and current events that's worth a damn, well, you're in the right place. This is On The Clock Radio. Funny as hell, and they love to argue. Let's do the damn thing. You're listening to On The Clock Radio with Raul Lescano. Raul Lescano. Reggie Edwards. Reggie Edwards. And Tyrone Benson. And Tyrone Benson. 